Hi, I'm Kim Sobat, and welcome to my art studio. I've had multiple people write me and ask me, um, you know, you make it look so easy, but when I go to do it, it's not so easy. Well, first, I this is what I, I do every day, and I'm using the same medium, so I do have some command over it that somebody who just started may not. But I do also have some tips that I'd like to share that might make it a little bit easy for, easier for you. Um, I don't always have an idea when I start my painting. Um, sometimes it's my color palette. I'll put out colors on my palette and they will remind me of fill in the blank. Um, I did uh, one painting that was a swamp theme. So I had green and brown and this kind of thing. Um, and so my color palette will sometimes initiate my thoughts on the theme. Um, sometimes it's the, the shapes and textures that are happening as I'm painting. So um, I haven't pre-planned this, it's just from looking at it, I can kind of see, okay, this looks like fill in the blank. Um, I did a painting not too long ago that I have here on YouTube called Check Please, and that was definitely on the fly. I just got the feeling of sort of a glamorous restaurant, and so I just kind of went with that. Um, the same principles uh, that you would use in painting a realistic painting um, should it be also applied to an abstract. And if you don't use some of these basic fundamentals, the painting can kind of fall apart. And so it was a little bit of a transition for me to go from realism to abstract because you kind of have to, I don't know, hit a toggle button. But um, because so many of the things carry over, uh, it actually was helpful that I had that background. So first you need good composition. If you need to sit down and sketch out your painting and see what, how you want it to be laid out and then go in and, and block in color and see if you like these colors as they work together. So that will help you. Um, you need a focal point just like you would in, in a realistic painting. Um, a place is for the eye to rest a little bit. Um, so more mellow places in your painting and then a good range of values So everything from very dark to very light and all things in between tends to make it more interesting and, and also kind of props up the composition as well So it may help you a little bit if you already have a theme in mind and you get out all the paints that, that go with your theme. For instance, let's say you pick night in the big city, then you might wanna pick, I don't know, blue, black, maybe purple, then maybe some like light yellow for the lights you'd see in the buildings, and then maybe some red here and there for, I don't know, like stop lights or something. Um, so yeah, have that all ready and mix it with your cold wax medium 50-50 uh, before and then you, you won't get stuck at least with colors. Um, another trick is if you're having trouble abstracting things, if you've been doing a lot of realistic work and you're looking to do um, more abstract work, then try getting a, a cheap pair of those shop goggles and just cover them with um, a thin layer of Vaseline so that your, your sight is distorted a little bit, <clears throat> it's blurry, and details uh, sort of fall away and you're left with mostly shapes and that's okay that's what abstraction is all about so um, that might help you at least get the base of your painting done also try like music music can kind of initiate thoughts and ideas and themes so that's another that's another thought for you um, okay so so I've got this cream color here and then I, I put this uh, burnt sienna on the bottom. Now in this case, the cream is my light value. Uh, burnt sienna is one of my medium values. And I like to mix up cool and warm too. And you'll notice that almost in every video I've done, I've talked about, oh, it needs to be cooler, it needs to warm up. Um, I pay a lot of attention to that because if it's all cool colors, it can just feel harsh. And if it's all warm, I don't know, it gets overly fuzzy. It's kind of like having carpet in a bathroom. <laughs> just just feels a little bit wrong. So I like to kind of mix those two up. And I'm adding in this vermilion red. Vermilion red's kind of pretty, a pretty red. And uh, it's 
uh, kind of bright and attention grabbing. So I'll, I'm going to use that in this too. <clears throat> and now I'm coming in with this warm gray. And uh, so that's my other medium value color. And again, so it's, it's acting as a foil to uh, the red. Um, it's, it's very neutral. The red's very bright. Red, you know, I have to be a little careful with red because it really wants to steal the show. So um, you kind of have to mellow it out with something a little bit neutral, I find. And <clears throat> so gray is perfect that way. It could be a beige or something, but something that's not super saturated in color. And, you know, honestly, when I laid these, these paint colors out on my palette, I didn't think about it, but they're already making me think of a Navajo blanket. I don't know if you've ever seen those, but it really reminds me of the colors of a Navajo blanket. So I'm going to kind of go with that cue. Um, you have to really listen to your inner voice and pay a lot of attention to your inner voice because I think that if you do, you'll find it, it directs you in the right way. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty happy with this color combination. It's it's working for me. I think it's just the right mixture of uh, warm and cool, and um, I've got a nice range of values. So I'm going to kind of do a little blending here. I do kind of this almost like skipping a rock type motion sometimes with a scraper, and I'm um, doing that here. We just kind of almost like pick it up and drop it and pick it up and drop it as you're pulling it at the same time, if that makes any sense. Um, because it'll pull up paint from lower layers and and then you can kind of drag it to other places. So um, it works kind of nicely. And I use a lot of this backhand motion and it's hard for people that uh, aren't used to working with these scraper tools to, to get with. They keep wanting to kind of rake it towards them. but that, And that's a technique, but it's not what I wanted to happen here so that's how you use that you can use a very very light touch when you do that um, you're barely barely touching the panel um, I, and I'm working wet on wet and this is another thing I wanted to talk about a little bit this can be intimidating for people because um, you know they're worried about muddying up the colors well e yeah you can muddy up the colors so you do have to um, Approach this with a light hand. I, I described it to a class I had as saying, think of this as like a baby you're trying to get to go to sleep. And you're just going to pat the baby very gently. Oh, baby, go to sleepy. And you're not going to like do jerky, choppy motions on this baby. You want it to go to sleep. Maybe you want to watch your television show or something and this baby won't oh, stop crying. You need it to go to sleep. So, yeah, you're going to just... You use a really light touch on the baby, and you need to do the same thing when your paints are wet, or you will end up mixing them all together, and you will end up with something resembling mud. So that's how you handle that. And, and the more you work with this medium, the more you'll get that. Um, it's kind of like, I don't know, anything. Like driving a car at first, you're, oh, you're just so attentive to everything. And after a while, it just starts to come naturally, and... You know, you don't have to think about it all the time. And it'll be like that for this, too. All right, so I'm kind of making some progress here, and I like. Um, so yeah, I'm going to kind of, like I said, I'm going to kind of pick up on this idea of the, the west, the southwest, maybe. And I'm going to add in some of this um, Van Dyke Brown. This is going to be my darker value. We talked about values earlier. I want a dark value as well. Now I do have black on this bottom layer and it, it'll show through in places, but this will ensure that I get that dark in there and I want it in with some amount of, some quantity. So I'm going to kind of, now I'm, I'm actually creating composition here. It may seem not nearly as obvious as if I had a vase of flowers or something like that or a you know, a lake with the mountains, but I'm um, basically putting together a path for the eye to travel around on this piece. Um, I think that's really important. And, you know, I guess a goal of mine in a way, maybe I'm just a people pleaser,
but I sort of want people who normally say, I don't get contemporary art, I don't, I don't understand it, to be able to look at my pieces and say, okay, I'm comfortable with this, I can get with this. And I do that by giving them sort of navigation um, and, and creating these paths across the painting. Um, it makes people feel comfortable. It feels very uncomfortable to be dangling in midair or um, wandering without a compass. And so this sort of gives them a little bit of uh, familiarity and security. Uh, but it also, I mean, I don't do it just for that reason. It, it, it starts to give a foundation to the painting. You can see just putting this dark in is really making it feel like not so heavy or so fluffy and ethereal. It feels a little more grounded. And that's, that's what I want that dark value to do for me. Let's go up here and blend a little bit. Okay, again, this I, I'm going to mention again. Everything I'm every time I'm using paint here with cold wax, I'm doing a 50/50 uh, combination of cold wax to paint. So half and half, half paint, half cold wax, and you know you can kind of eyeball it. What you want to happen is the paint gets matte. It doesn't. Sh it's not shiny like it was when it came out of the tube. It should be a matte finish. And you may need just a smidge more cold wax or less, possibly. I find I need at least 50-50, but you can probably get away with less. Um, I just kind of like to do that. It actually speeds up drying if you have a little bit more uh, cold wax to paint. So anyway, that's, that's my method. Um, I'm putting in some darker areas here. Um, the painting right now feels a little lacy to me, and I'm trying to kind of give it a little more heft. And I can do that by having a little more, uh, more solid spaces, I guess. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. Now I'll make all kinds of adjustments, but I just kind of want to lay these in for now. And come back in with my squeegee and do a little bit of blending carefully because I'm using a very dark color, black. If you just are heavy handed, it's going to really, really darken up and muddy up your painting. So go light and easy with that black. Again, I'm using that sort of backhand uh, approach with the with the squeegee to do that. I'm gonna just go up here and kind of smooth this out a little bit up here. I, you know, like I talked about earlier, you do kind of want a place for the eye to rest. Um, it doesn't have to be super big swath of white or anything, but um, just places that are a little bit more chill. Um, I'm a little bit guilty of having noisy paintings. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. But when I'm conscientious, I'm, I don't do that. I try to leave some places that are, I don't know, just a little bit more restful. I'll go across this way this time. Um, I've mentioned before, it's good to go both up and down and maybe even diagonally across wet paint. Um, or you get a very directional wind sort of thing going on. And if you want that, that's fine. If that's what you're looking to do, it works great. But I'm typically not, so I will go in different directions to make it more of an organic shape rather than this strong wind coming through kind of thing. I'm just going to go in here with the skewer. You know, abstract paintings need some details, just like realistic paintings do. This is sort of like adding highlights or something like that to a realistic painting when you can come in with some of these tools and make more delicate markings. It kind of adds that fun, almost finished look to a piece. So I like to have a little bit of that. Then I always go back and use my squeegee and go over those spaces and kind of just 
lightly go over those markings because they look a little bit too uh, fresh and clawed or something if I don't smooth them out a tiny bit. Now I didn't mention at the beginning of this video, but I have in all my other ones. I always start with uh, a firm surface to paint on, and I prefer uh, wood panels that have cradles on them. You don't have to have a cradle panel. You can use a, just a piece of masonite woodwork, but um, you know, and gessoed, of course. But um, then I use a layer of gesso, and then I go over in a layer of acrylic. Uh, you don't have to use that acrylic, but I really like to because I end up digging down to the bottom because I'm using a wet-on-wet -wet technique so often. I'm going down to the very bottom layer often, and so when I do, I don't want to go down to a bare panel. I want there to be some kind of color down there, so that's why I always put uh, a layer of acrylic, and you can use whatever color you want. I tend to go for the darker ones, but you can, you know, purple, it doesn't matter, whatever, whatever floats your boat there, but um, just something other than bare wood or white gesso or something like that. Even if you want white to be what shows, you might consider putting on a layer of white acrylic. Just doing some, I don't know, final touches. And this always takes me a little while. And I, my advice to you on this is, you know, people say, when's it finished? Well, my advice to you is stand back away from your painting multiple times. And usually what I will do is I'll prop it up on an easel I'll go all the way out of the room. I'll close the door. I will have this little talk to with myself about how I'm a total stranger and I've never seen this painting before. And then I open the door and I know it sounds crazy, but that actually works. It gives me a totally fresh perspective on the work. Sometimes I'll open the door. I'm like, ah, it's awful. Um, other times I'll open it and I'm like, oh, it's finished. Why did I think it wasn't finished? It's perfect just the way it is. So I would highly recommend standing back and away from your work often. It really gives a much better perspective. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm, you know, okay, I said I was gonna kind of go with this desert theme, and I am. I'm putting in some, some, um, land formations, should we call them rocks or boulders or something like that. Um, I'm covering up a little bit of this red. It's too noticeable up in the corner. It catches my eye and I don't want people to just look at this and their eye goes immediately to the corner of the painting. That's kind of weird. Now, don't panic here. I'm going to go back here and put in some red. Um, I like the red. I just didn't want it in that corner. Add it a little bit lower so it's still part of my composition instead of off in the corner where it looks like it's a sticker or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm liking that better. And I just need to kind of mellow it out a little bit, but I think, don't you think that looks way better than when that odd little blob was up there in the corner? It's This seems more intentional. And then, you know, when you're using a strong color like red, oftentimes red will be where your eye goes. So you have to be paying attention about where you put it. You can't be completely random because the eye is going to follow that red path. It's definitely the most distinctive thing on the painting. So um, I want there to be an entrance with red and an exit with the red and traveling around in the middle. So um, what I've done so it's not so red, red, red everywhere is I've blended it in some other places. So it's um, subtle in some places and then other places where I want you to go. It's a little bit more uh, vibrant and saturated. And this is better. I'm liking this better. Now, with wet on wet, okay, this has gotten really very heavy with paint. I got a lot of paint on here. Didn't really mean to put this much on, but I did. Uh, it's okay. Here's what you do. You can take this scraper I'm using right now, and you can scrape off uh, all, all the paint all the way to the bottom. 
and then go back and reapply. And that's what I'm doing here. There was so much there, I couldn't get the red to adhere to this very wet paint. And you may find that you get into that too. And that's how you take care of that. And that's, that's one of the beauties actually of working with wet on wet. You can make some real on the fly calls. I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of liking this color palette. It's working for me. Okay, I'm adding a little bit of red along that horizon line. So what I'm kind of thinking is, this is sort of reminding me of fire. And I've already got a title in mind, and I'm going to run it by you. I'm going to call this Fire in Red Rock Canyon. I think it sort of embraces all the things that I'm looking to convey in this little painting. So, you know, fire, it tends to, when it spreads, it goes from one body of fire to the next and kind of makes um, a little line in between and I'm going to do that with the paint. You know, I want a little bit of gray back in here, kind of lost that in the, in the blending and whatnot. So yeah, I want a little bit more of that back in there. I like to have, I like to have a good amount of neutrals. I think it adds, I don't know, a mellowness or something very comfortable. And I have some, you know, one thing that'll just drive me crazy and I have to like, I have to fix it right away is if I see a really straight line in an otherwise organic shape and composition, I gotta go fix that. It, it just will drive me crazy. So I did that there. I could see some sort of straight lines and there's not straight lines like that in the sky or in, in nature in general, typically um, look like an engineer gotten loose in the sky or something. <laughs> and I have this bluff thing in the front and um, what that does, that bluff thing down there from the bottom left corner up into the middle of the right is it, it sort of you know brings you into the painting. It's the entrance, the entry door and takes you all the way across so you're not like stuck in the middle or floating around in the sky somewhere. You really have to take the viewer by the hand and give them a really uh, distinct direction to follow and if you do that it'll always be a more satisfying painting to, to them and to you. Just put a little bit of red in there. Okay I'm kind of doing this little fire-esque thing. Uh, I don't want it to be ridiculously obvious it's a fire but I kind of want a little of that suggestion. I mean, that is going to be my title, is Fire in Red Rock Canyon, and um, so where's the fire, right? And somehow that's bugging me. I need to do something in that bottom right corner. It needs some red or something. I'm going to go over here first and fix that. Okay, so yeah, mellowing that out a little bit, it was um, it's like, where's the focal point? It seems like it's everywhere, so I'm trying to kind of establish that a little bit more. Like I said, red, red can be a runaway train, so you have to tame it. <laughs> this is more than I would usually use in a painting, but um, yeah, I like it. Okay, trying to kind of break up that blob a little bit. And I'm very close to finished. Just add that little bit of red in there in that corner. Yeah, I know it seems like a little thing, but it'll drive me nuts. 
Okay. So I think I'm finished and I'm just going to uh, make an adjustment here. Yeah. All right, so there you go. Fire in Red Rock Canyon. Hey, thanks for joining me today and I hope I answered some of your questions about abstraction and uh, how to work with cold wax. Please visit my website, kimsobat.com, and my YouTube channel is Kim Sobat, where I have other painting demonstrations, how-tos, and a tour of my studio. Um, if you're interested in having me come to your town and do an art workshop, please contact me at kim at kimsobat.com. Thanks for watching.